Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about sensor fusion for orientation estimation. Um, and to join me to talk about this interesting topic, I've got my close friend and, and colleague, uh, Roberto Valenti. Uh, Roberto, why don't you tell our audience what you do and uh, why you're the best person to talk about sensor fusion? Sure, thank you. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm a senior robotics research scientist here at MathWorks. I work at the Advanced, uh, advanced Research and Technology Office. And, you know, besides doing research, we also um, engage collaboration with academia, uh, especially for uh, research and development. Um. Okay, awesome. Um, so, uh, today Roberto and I are going to introduce you to a new toolbox that we released with uh, MATLAB uh, 2018B. Uh, so, Roberto, do you want to go ahead and tell us what this new toolbox is and what are the functionalities of it? Okay, so yes, uh, the Sensor Fusion and Tracking Toolbox, it's a new toolbox that provides you features to um, fuse uh, data from different kinds of sensors all together. And for example, here, as you can see in the slide, we fuse data from, from sensors as long as, uh, as well as um, um, output from detection algorithms to have your uh, robot or your vehicle, um, this uh, self and situational awareness. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we can, we can um, describe this toolbox as the, the bridge between signal and mean match processing and your control. Uh, part of your of your system. Interesting. So 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 it's it's basically making sense of your sensor data, right? Yeah. For lack of a better word. Yeah, it makes sense. Cool. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, so can, can you can tell us a little bit more about what this what functionality uh, does this toolbox contain? Yeah. Uh, so among all the functionalities, it contains, for example, scenario and sensor simulation. So you can simulate your sensors easily just using some function that is already uh, provided by the toolbox, as well as tracking and localization algorithms. Okay. You can also visualize uh, your data or, for example, your path, uh, mm -hmm. the path of your algorithm or, or robot. And eventually, if you want, you can deploy the code that has been automatically generated by, by MATLAB into your target, which can be a microcontroller or, um, you know, anything that is uh, embedded in your, in your robot. Okay, cool. For today's agenda, uh, Roberto is going to go through what an inertial measurement unit is, and then also we're also going to talk about what a magnetic angular rate and gravity sensor is. So, so these are pretty common sensors in, um, you know, in, in autonomous vehicles, in robots, right. just basically trying to orient yourself with, with the environment. Um, uh, we're then going to go into what orientation estimation is, and we're going to do that for an IMU. We've got a pretty cool demo lined up. Yep. Um, and then we're going to talk about some more sensor fusion for orientation estimation. So Roberto, why don't you take it away and... All the best. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So, yeah, as uh, Connell was saying here, so one of the functionalities of the uh, newer sensor fusion and tracking toolbox is the orientation estimation. So you can actually uh, um, uh, get uh, the orientation estimation uh, without writing any complex uh, common filters or any other algorithm, but, but just by calling a function. That's, oh, that's a great thing about this uh, toolbox. Okay. So, okay, so let's, let, let me, let me tell a little bit about these uh, sensors like IMU and MARC. So an IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, is a sensor that is composed of a three-axis gyroscope, which provides you a measurement of angular velocity mm -hmm. and so three in, three in the three axis, X, Y, Z. Also, there is an accelerometer, three-axis accelerometer for uh, acceleration, of course. Yep. And if we have a magnetometer, which is basically a compass, a three-axis compass, we usually refer uh, to as MARC, which stands for Magnetic Angular Rate and Gravity. Okay. All right, so uh, these sensors, uh, you know, if we, if we want to deploy it on a, on a robot or a small vehicle, we usually use the microelectromechanical system-based devices, mm -hmm. which, yep. which, you know, are very small, uh, cheap, very convenient. However, they, they are accuracy, it's not that great, right? Correct. So there is, yep. you know, there is noise. Um, so that's why we model the, the output of the sensor as, as here described in the slides. So on the right, you can see the angular velocity that we uh, get from the sensor. It's, it's, um, it's composed of the, uh, the true angular velocity Plus, we have bias and noise. Okay. So the noise, as you know, it's the high frequency noise that we have in any kind of sensor, yep. and the bias is some sort of low frequency noise. Mm. It's it's we can consider it as a as a constant uh, bias, yep. like yep. In, a, in a small window of time, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we have. Similarly, for the acceleration, we still have bias and noise, mm -hmm. but we also have the true um, acceleration due to the motion that I usually call it. Uh, non-gravitational acceleration correct, correct. Is, the, is the one due only to the motion of the yep. uh, vehicle. 
plus the gravity. Mm -hmm. So we Makes actually sense. have both. Yep. Linear acceleration from the motion plus the gravity acceleration. Okay. Okay. So in, in the case of a magnetometer, still bias, noise, plus the true magnetic field, which is in this case, uh, the Earth magnetic field. Mm -hmm. That's the one we need Correct. for an, uh, orient ourselves, yep. right? For, especially for the heading. Uh, but we also have uh, some magnetic disturbances. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I uh, call M int, right? Okay. The interference. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So um, from an IMU, we can uh, estimate the orientation, as, as we said before, right? Mm -hmm. So an intuitive way to estimate the orientation might be just by integrating the angular velocities, right? Okay. So just simple integration, you get the three angles, rock, pitch, mm -hmm. and yaw. Yep. However, as I uh, was mentioning before, we have this bias, right? Mm -hmm. So as we integrate, um, the output will be drifting. Correct. So we're going to have a big error that is going to um, you know, increase unbounded. Yeah. So that's yeah. a big issue with yeah. just integrating the angle of velocity. Okay. So, yeah, all, all, you can also um, get an estimation from the accelerometer. Mm -hmm. The way we do it, it's basically by getting the, um, the measurement from the accelerometer, assuming there is no um, motion of the body. So basically okay. there is no linear acceleration. Okay. But the only acceleration we measure is the gravity mm -hmm. that is divided by the three components, right, in, into the three uh, components. Then we just use some uh, some trigonometry, we can get um, the roll and pitch with respect to the vertical, mm -hmm. right, okay. vertical axis. Okay. Because that's our gravity, our gravity yep. always yep. points down. Okay. However, yes, as I was saying before, we only have roll and pitch, no yaw. The reason why we don't have the yaw is because any variation, uh, on, so basically the yaw, mm -hmm. doesn't provide, doesn't uh, doesn't give you any variation on the with respect uh, to the with z respect axis. To the z -axis. Yep. Okay. So that's why we can Makes use accelerometer yep. for for yaw. However, yes, in this case, uh, so besides not having the yaw estimation, we also have a very noise estimation because yep. the you know the accelerometer has a, a high frequency noise, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the idea would be to get the best out of the two kind of estimations. So okay. having a something some estimation which doesn't have a lot of noise, mm -hmm. but at the same time doesn't drift. Correct, correct. So okay. and so the first one, the estimation from the gyroscope, it's it's pretty smooth but drift. Mm -hmm. While and, you know the accelerometer is quite of the opposite. It doesn't drift, but it has a lot of high frequency noise. Um, okay, so here um, in the case of the man magnetometer, so the magnetometer is usually used to correct uh, the yaw, right? Okay. So as I was saying before, from the accelerometer we can only estimate roll and pitch. Mm -hmm. So the magnetometer would be a perfect sensors, um, a sensor to get an estimation of the yaw. So Correct. usually, if we just use accelerometer magnetometer, we get the estimation roll and pitch to project the magnetic field vector into the horizontal plane, Correct. and then we get you know the heading um, of the magnetic field vector with respect to the uh, global magnetic field vector. Okay. Okay. But again, even in this case, we still have noisy estimation. Mm -hmm. As, as I was saying before, the best way to do it is fuse together all these sensors, all three sensors yeah. to have a better uh, orientation estimation, drift-free and noise-free. Okay. okay. Yep. Ideal. Yep. Okay, so there are several methods to do that. So one of these methods, which is basically the, the most common and probably the best, it's, it's um, a common filter. Okay. So from the common filter, you need um, um, a prediction step. So the first uh, step would be getting the data uh, from your input get an estimate through a mathematical model and then correct the uh, you know the estimation with uh, some some other measurement that would be in this case your your correction right mm -hmm. so we have two steps prediction and correction in the case of uh, orientation estimation from IMU you get your prediction by integrating uh, well it's a bit more complicated than mm -hmm. that but we can assume it's just a simple integration of uh, gyroscope mm -hmm. readings and then we correct by um, using the uh, measurements from accelerometer and magnetometer. Okay. So I, I, I see a couple, I see a few sigma values in there. Can you, right. can you explain that? Value? Yes. Yes. Okay. But the, but the, the fusion that it's, that happens inside a common filter is a proba probabilistic fusion. Okay. So uh, okay. it's a proba probabilistic method to fuse this data, the data together and based on a maximum likelihood. Mm. So we need to have an estimation of of the uh, covariance of this me okay. measurement. Okay, okay. So, or so we can say more generally um, um, uncertainty of okay, the, of the okay. readings. So, so, so this is this is a value that you can get from the sensor data sheet. Yes, or yes, okay. yes. So the sigma actually is just a standard deviation. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Then we square it yep. and we get the the, yep. the covariance. All right. So, so we, we're going to go into MATLAB real quick, and um, and Roberto's put together a real cool demo. Um, so I'm going to hand it over back to him. And yeah, sure. Yeah. So for this demo. 
um, I actually use the data from, from my iPhone over here. So it's an easy way to get uh, data from an IMU so, because everyone has a um, yeah, phone, yeah, right? Yeah, so from simple, the phone, right? using in, uh, our MATLAB mobile application, mm -hmm. we can transfer this data uh, to the MATLAB yeah. on my desktop. Okay, now I have my phone. Um, so the phone is going to stream data to the desktop application using the MATLAB mobile app. And uh, okay, so here, this is the live script. This is my phone. So let me step through all the section of this uh, live script. So first, as I said, it will connect the uh, my phone to the um, desktop MATLAB, mm -hmm. and then okay. So here, here basically we do uh, we define the uh, iPhone object. Correct. That is basically is the object that uh, will log the data from the phone's IMU, mm -hmm. and then you know, I will use this data uh, to run the sensor fusion uh, um, function. Okay, cool. So th th let's let's give the script a run and see what happens. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we run it, and then, okay, then I'm streaming data, so I'm moving the phone around, so you will see the orientation will change. Okay. Okay, so it's done, so I did just a few seconds, and then the sensor fusion used the data that I just um, logged into the uh, MATLAB desktop. Okay, and it will calculate the orientation. So in this case, I'm using the IMU filter function. The IMU filter function, so let me just go back here. So the new filter function uses only accelerometer angular velocity. Okay. So um, it uses uh, internally an uh, indirect quaternion-based common filter, mm -hmm. extended common filter. So the angular velocity, again, is used for uh, prediction and the acceleration for correction. However, as as I said before, we don't have an orientation, uh, sorry, we don't have uh, a correction for the Correct. yaw. Correct. So the yaw will just be from the angular velocity. Okay. So that's why we might see some drift. Okay, uh, and and again, th this the, the the function that you use to to declare the IMU filter, uh, that function is part of the sensor fusion and tracking tool. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely, yes. Okay, so uh, you can see how easy it is. So you just define your IMU filter here. It's just mm -hmm. this line of code. Okay, and you give as input the sample rate. Okay, so in this case, it's the same sample rate uh, as, as as the iPhone. As yeah. the iPhone, correct. And then you just need to uh, give as input some uh, some, some parameters. parameters. Yeah. So yeah. these are the uh, uh, the covariances that I was talking about before, okay. right? So we have the parameters, the um, covariance for the gyroscope, mm -hmm. acceleration, right? And this linear acceleration noise, it's basically to mitigate the error due to the um, non-gravitational acceleration. Okay. So when okay. you actually move, like you yep. shake your phone in this case. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, so, and this is the actual um, uh, orientation estimation. Okay. Um, yeah, so... This, uh, basically, it's used to pass the data, mm -hmm. right? So these are the input, acceleration, angular velocity, and, and this is the actual fusion. So the okay. fusion happened here. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, and um, so along with the uh, new data, so angular velocity, acceleration, I also stream the um, orientation from the iPhone. Mm. So inside the iPhone, there is also an algorithm that, that uh, estimates the orientation. Okay. So. I'm streaming that data as well, so we can compare our method uh, with the one that is inside the iPhone. Okay, okay. So as you can see here, so this is the role. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by the way, let me just tell you that the um, so the sensor fusion that I'm using here does everything using quaternion. Right? Okay, okay. But just for the sake of simplicity, I'm converting it in role pitch and yaw, okay. so L okay. angles, so yep. we can simply visualize yep. it. Yep. So this is the role. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I can open this. Okay, so, um, yeah, as you can see, they are very close yep. to each other. Of course, there is some difference because they are not the same, mm -hmm. but most likely the, the algorithms the, are different. The algorithms know. are yeah. different, yep. yes. Okay, so, and this is the role, and the, here is the pitch. So, mm -hmm. even in this case, of course, uh, there is some difference. Yeah, so, so, so what I can see is, if, and if I'm just analyzing this plot a little bit, I can see that at, at the start of your logging signal, you can see there is, there is a, a larger difference between between the between the two lines, but it, it sort of sends to, uh, tends to converge after that. Is there a particular reason for that? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, that's a good question. So, um, the iPhone orientation estimation has been running for a while, Correct. most likely yeah, since yeah. This one, it was on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. all the data, all the covariance matrices and so on, bias estimation, they all converged, right? Okay. Because they need some, some time to converge to the proper yeah. value. Yep. So for the iPhone um, uh, algorithm, uh, most likely everything has converged already. Okay. While for our case, it might take some, some time. Okay. So okay. Because we run the algorithm as soon as we run the script. So of okay. course, okay. They, they, they are not. So okay. Settle. Yet. Okay. 
That makes sense. Okay. Okay, and eventually, uh, I mean, finally, we have and, yo. And this is the yo. Okay. Yeah. So this is the yo, and as I said before, we don't have correction from the magnetometer, mm -hmm. but you don't see a lot of drift because this was uh, run only for a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they are still pretty close to okay. each other. Okay. Cool. Okay, so next we are going to show the uh, the filter with the magnetometer um, okay, okay, input. Okay. Okay. So magnetic magnetic field in this case would also be used in the sensor fusion. Mm -hmm. So the uh, sensor fusion is still the same kind of algorithm. It's a indirect external kernel filter, mm -hmm. uh, quaternion based. But again, but it, it's, it's, it's going to also take into account the magnetic. Uh, yes, magnetic in this case, yep. yes, it does okay. that. And also a good thing about this filter that also um, estimates the magnetic disturbances. Okay, okay. So it can mitigate the effect of the interference that we have. And, and, and that, that's, actually a, that's actually a very interesting problem for these robot teams because usually when, you know, because the, because the size of these robots are so tiny, uh, the motors and, and actuators on these robots are usually yeah. very close to the to, to, to the IMU sensor and that, that creates a lot of a lot of magnetic disturbance correct, more than anything correct, else with the sensors. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, um, again, it's the same kind of algorithm. Um, so we are going to use the same phone, of course, the same kind of data, yep. but with the add uh, of the magnetic field mm -hmm. for uh, the orientation. Okay, yeah, so if, if we run the filter and we just you know, collect some data mm -hmm. over here. Okay, so we will see the visualization, the output. Okay, so yeah, this is the role. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, I mean, in this case, they look very close to each other. Yep. And yeah, this and is you can, the... you can see that, uh, the, yeah. that, that error at the start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it will converge. Mm -hmm. So they will look much closer okay. later on. And yeah, same thing for pitch. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the error at the beginning might be even bigger because we also have a man magnetic disturbance uh, estimation. They will take some time mm -hmm. to converge. And yeah, and yo. Okay. Same thing. That's cool. So, how is calling the function for 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 you know with 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 the magnet with the magnetometer correction different from the one that you showed us earlier? Is is the function called the same? Is there still just one single line of code that you can use? Yeah. So the function is in this case is called AHRS. Okay. Filter. So AHRS. Yeah. That, that's that's a pretty common filter. Yes. Exactly. So yeah. AHRS basically stands for a uh, attitude and heading reference uh, system. Correct. Correct. Because well, in this case, we also have the heading re reference system yep. as well from magnetometer. Um, yeah, and it's it's in here. So this oh, so, okay, okay. The so difference. so the, the 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 call signature is, sim is similar. You have you still feed in those additional parameters, and then you right. We have additional parameters for the magnetic for magnetometer, field, yeah. and of course the filter itself. We also have as Correct. input. You, you also feed in the, the magnetic. The magnetic field. Yep. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So now let's go back to the so slides. Let's... All right. So what are some some few uh, takeaways mm -hmm. from here? So we have. We can get an orientation estimation in just one function call. Yep. I mean, of course, there is some definition at the beginning, but all we have to do is just define the filter and call it yep. fit, fit yep. you know, the inputs. And the orientation estimated uh, through an extended common filter. So, I was, as I was saying before, it's a indirect quaternion based extended common mm -hmm. filter. Yep. And the cool thing about this is that supports function uh, support code generation. Okay. So we can just click a button and get um, uh, C plus um, plus nice, uh, nice version of it. Speaking of code generation, we we just released a training on uh, generating C and C plus plus code from from uh, from MATLAB and Simulink that you guys might want to check out. It's it's about it's about four or five hours of training material that you can go through at your own pace and you can download files. So um, uh, once once you figure out how to do that, you can you can take these functions and generate code for them as yeah. well. So okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, Roberto, for thank taking you. the time out to, to give us this presentation. Um, finally, before we wrap up, I just wanted to point you guys to uh, the resources. Uh, you can get in touch with us either on Facebook or through our email address. And also check out the, the other links that we have up on screen. Um, there's something for everyone over there. Um, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again on the Robotics Arena. Bye.